In this video, you will learn about the rise and fall of Lucifer, also known as the Devil or Satan. You will discover his subtle strategies to defeat you. Make sure you stay to the end, where you will learn how you can be victorious. Hi everyone, this is Dustin with Hope Through Prophecy. We are about to throw the spotlight on the glorious rise and tragic fall of a good angel gone bad. First, if you would like to better understand Bible prophecy and be prepared for the soon return of Jesus, I hope you will quickly subscribe and click the bell icon below so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Many see the chaos, confusion, and death in this world and ask how could a God of love allow this? To answer this, we must first travel back to the courts of heaven where we discover the origins of a being named Lucifer. Ezekiel 28.15 describes this powerful being, Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created. From this verse we learn two things. One, Lucifer is a created being. And two, he was created perfect. The Bible reveals additional information about this perfect being known as Lucifer. Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Lucifer was known throughout the courts of heaven as the wisest, most beautiful of all the created beings. In fact, Lucifer held the highest, most respected position in all of heaven, second only to God Himself. He served as the covering cherub, standing in the very courtroom of the God of the universe. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. We can understand this better by considering the earthly sanctuary service, which was given to God's people on earth as a model or blueprint of God's true sanctuary in heaven. In the most holy place of this sanctuary, there was the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the throne of God. The ark contains two tablets of stone, the Ten Commandments, the very foundation of His government. On top of the ark sits the mercy seat, where the supernatural presence of God dwelt. This Shekinah glory was covered by two angels with outstretched wings. Lucifer held this prestigious position in heaven. He was to cover and protect God and His holy law. So what happened? What led to Lucifer's fall? Ezekiel reveals the cause of this great rebellion. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Isaiah provides further details. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. Lucifer was guilty of pride. Because of his great beauty and intelligence, he thought he could be like God himself. Ezekiel 28.15 reads, Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. The Bible defines iniquity or sin as the breaking of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. So we can see that Lucifer was guilty of breaking the very law that he was supposed to cover and protect. Did God create the devil? The answer is no. God created Lucifer the same way he makes all of his creatures, with free will. That is, with the freedom to choose either to obey him or reject him. He desires his creatures to follow him out of love, not because they are forced. So what happened next? We read of the epic result of Lucifer's rebellion in the book of Revelation. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. 
And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Here we see a great battle in the courts of heaven. Satan, along with the angels he deceived, is cast down to this earth. Some ask the question, why didn't God just destroy Lucifer and the fallen angels right then and there? If God would have destroyed Satan and his angels at that time, then the rest of the universe would obey God out of fear rather than love. There would still be unanswered questions. Is God fair, loving, and good? Can his law be fully obeyed? And does it lead to true happiness? Satan had raised these questions in his rebellion, and they needed to be fully answered so that sin would never rise again. God, in his perfect wisdom, knew that he would have to allow sin to run its course so that the entire universe could see the results of sin and decide for themselves if God is good. Now that we have seen the story of the devil's origin and fall, it is critical that we unmask his battle plans so that we can be prepared. First, we must realize that we have a real enemy. Satan is delighted when he is depicted as a cartoon creature with horns and a pitchfork. This makes him seem like a joke, a fairy tale, a figment of the imagination. Nothing could be further from the truth. We face a mighty foe. 1 Peter 5a warns us, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Each of us is engaged in a great war, a battle for our soul. What are the strategies that Satan uses to attack us? Number one, the devil is a liar. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Number two, Satan causes sickness and pain. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Sometimes sickness is the result of our own poor health choices, but Satan also has the ability to cause sickness. Number three, Satan misquotes scripture. Then the devil saith unto him, Cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Just because you hear someone using scripture doesn't mean they are from God. You must test all things by the Bible. Number four, the devil works miracles, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles. Number five, Satan and his demons can appear to be someone they are not. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Just because someone looks good and sounds good doesn't mean they are from God. We must test everything by the Bible. Number six, the devil is a murderer. He was a murderer from the beginning. It is Satan, not God, who is responsible for all of the death, destruction, and murder in this world. Number seven, Satan cast doubt on God's law. Satan brought sin and death to planet Earth by leading the first humans to sin. God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and allowed them to eat from all of the beautiful fruit trees of the garden except for one. Satan influenced Earth's first humans to doubt God's law. Satan, appearing in the form of a serpent, said, Hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? In the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Just as he did to the angels in heaven, Satan caused Eve to doubt and question God's law. He even continues this strategy today. In fact, the major teaching of Satanism is do what thou will shall be the whole of the law. Sadly, this deception has even crept into many Christian churches. They claim that because they are under grace, they no longer need to obey God's law. In contrast, the very words of Jesus read, If you love me, keep my commandments. So, with all these strategies of Satan, can we ever overcome him? Friends, there is good news. We can have victory over Satan, our enemy. This victory is possible because of a world-changing event that happened over 2,000 years ago. 
Because of His great love for us, God sent His Son to die for the sins of the human race and take the death penalty that you and I rightly deserve. Jesus Christ lived a life of sacrifice, humble service, and obedience to God's law. He states in John 15, 10, I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. In His perfect life, He proved that Satan's allegations against God's law were false. As the universe gazed with horror on the vicious way that Satan attacked Jesus while on this earth, Satan's true colors were exposed. As Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the human race, we can see that mercy and justice kissed each other. Here is God's justice. By this sacrificial death, it was seen that God's law can never be changed or altered. The result of sin, breaking God's law, had to be paid even by God Himself. Jesus Christ, who is both God and human, never sinned, but took our sins upon Himself and paid the death penalty. Here is God's mercy. He sent His own Son to die for our sin so that we can live. On that cross, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself. By His stripes, we are healed. For more information on this beautiful story of salvation and how it affects you, make sure to check out my video on this topic. As Jesus gave up His last breaths on that old rugged cross, He gasped out, It is finished. With those powerful words, the death knell of Satan was wrong. The end result of the devil is certain. The Bible tells us that Jesus, through death, He might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Jesus' victory over sin and death was so complete that death could not keep Him down. He rose up from the grave on the third day, victorious. But friends, the battle is not over. The great controversy between good and evil rages on. Revelation 12.12 12 reads, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The devil, now a defeated foe, is trying to bring down as many people as possible. But Jesus' victory on the cross and resurrection make it possible for us to have victory. Romans 8.37 reads, We are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. We can have victory over sin and Satan. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. We must constantly be on guard against the attacks of the devil. We must continue to pray, read our Bibles, be careful what we watch and listen to, and submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Most importantly, we must be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. What other strategies have you found to be helpful in overcoming the attacks of Satan? Please share them in the comment section below. You and I must make a decision. Which side will you take? The Bible tells us to choose you this day whom you will serve. Will you ally yourself with Satan, the enemy of your soul? Or will you enlist under the blood-stained banner of Prince Emmanuel? Choose Jesus. Choose Him every day. Choose Him every moment. If this is your decision today, please write in the comments section below, I choose Jesus. There will come a day when the whole world will have made their decision for or against Jesus. Even the wicked, before they are destroyed, will acknowledge God's goodness. Every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. After seeing the final results of Lucifer's rebellion and all the pain and anguish it caused, and after witnessing the love and mercy of God shown in Jesus, the universe will declare with one accord, God is love. God will then bring an end to Satan, that great deceiver. He will destroy him. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth, and never shalt thou be any more. 
the universe will once again be in perfect harmony and affliction shall not rise up the second time. Friend, I want you to be with me in that kingdom. I want to meet you on the sea of glass wearing a crown of victory. Let's continue this study through God's Word together. If you haven't already, please subscribe below and click like if this video has been helpful to you. If you would like to receive regular updates on our ministry or would like to enroll in a free online Bible study course, please text HOPE to 50597. Remember friends, stay faithful to the end and you will receive a crown of life.